Today, we're going to create an aquarium full of swarming cells. That's because every spaceship needs a lab to study alien life forms. The aim is to generate these cells as a volumetric texture. However, the challenge is to make them procedural, animated, and parametric. We can use either EV or Cycles as the render engine. Notice these settings under the volumetric properties, which should give good volumetric renders. However, if at any point your computer starts lagging, increase the tile size and reduce the sample count. Now, all we need for the model is a cube with a material attached to it. Once we have that, we can then head over to the shading viewport. First off, delete the principled BSDF shader. Now, before we add any nodes, let's create some placeholders for different parts of the shader setup. So, press Shift A to bring up the Add menu and add a frame to the shader. Now, press Shift D to duplicate the frame four times. Once the four frames are in place, give them a name by right-clicking and selecting the Rename option. Now that we have the placeholders for different parts of the shader, it's time to start adding some nodes. The way we'll do this is that I'm going to add a few nodes first and then explain what each of them does in relation to the entire shader. So press Shift A again to bring up the Add menu, then use the search field to find a texture coordinate node and add it to the shader. Then do the same thing to drop in a mapping, a Voronoi texture, and a principled volume node. The texture coordinate node outputs UV coordinates relative to the center of the object. The mapping node applies a displacement, rotation, or scale to those coordinates. Those coordinates are then fed into the Voronoi texture node, which generates a random Voronoi pattern. Set the function of the Voronoi texture to smooth F1 to have more control of the shape of the cells. The principled volume node is one of Blender's built-in shader nodes which creates an output for the material. Make sure to connect the output of the volume shader to the volume input of the material node. We're not seeing any cells yet. That's because the Voronoi pattern is lighting up the entire material. To fix this, press Shift A to bring up the Add menu, then using the search field, find the Math node, add it to the shader, and duplicate it by pressing Shift D. Make sure to set the first math operation to compare, and the second math operation to multiply. The magic node here is a compare node, which takes in the distance value from the Voronoi texture, and then outputs a value of 1, only if the difference between its first and second input values is less than epsilon. This will produce the bubble pattern you see on the screen. These will be the outer walls of the cells. Keep in mind that you can control the diameter of the cells using the first output of the compare node, and you can set the thickness of the cell walls using the epsilon value. Last but not least, the multiply node sets the intensity of the emission of cell walls. Now that we have the cell walls, let's use a similar approach to create a nucleus for each cell. To do this, select the three nodes in the cell wall frame and duplicate them by pressing Shift D. Then bring an Add Shader node. Now to generate the nuclei, adjust the input values of the new compare node. Also, increase the value of the multiply node to make the emission of the nucleus stronger and therefore more prominent. You can control the size and thickness of the cell nucleus using the inputs of this compare node. Now to add some randomness to the structure of the cells, let's add a noise texture, a vector math, and a mix RGB node. The noise texture will generate random values to distort the shape of the cells. Set the noise texture to 4D so we can later use the W value to animate the noise. Also, make sure to use the color output so that we can separate values along each of the X, Y, and Z directions. Then, set the operation of the vector math node to multiply. This will allow us to control the amplitude of the random noise separately along the X, Y, and Z axes. The mix RGB node combines the original UV coordinates with the distorted ones. To tweak the bumps generated on the cell, use the scale value of the noise texture to control the frequency of bumps on the cell walls, while the vector multiply node lets us set the magnitude of the bumps. Now, to animate the cells to follow a turbulent flow, add another noise texture and another vector math node. Similar to what we did a few moments ago, these two nodes also distort the UV coordinates. However, this time, we want the distortion to happen at a larger scale and use it to animate the entire texture. To do this, make sure to change the noise texture to 4D so that we have access to the W value and also decrease the scale. 
Now, you can animate the W value either by adding keyframes to it, or you can create a simple driver. I'm going to take the second approach and add a driver. To do this, type in the hash sign, followed by the expression frame divided by 50. Now, do the same thing with the W value of the second noise texture, this time to animate the random bumps of the cell walls. With the drivers in place, press spacebar on your keyboard to play the animation. As you can see, unfortunately, my graphics card is not powerful enough to generate a smooth animation in the viewport. However, if I go ahead and render the model, these are some examples we can get using different parameters. If you want to learn how to create the sci-fi panels from the intro, consider watching this next video. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time.